Welcome to this short two-part tutorial on how I use my brush sets inside of Photoshop. This will be a quick overview on how I use some of the main brushes in Photoshop when concepting. Part 1 will look at a full body character from ZBrush and how to add an interesting composition to finish off the concept, focusing on the background and adding extra details to your ZBrush render. Part 2 will focus on how to finish off a ZBrush bust concept using the brushes to create a more interesting portrait. All these brushes are on sale, just follow the link in the description box below. All contributions will help this channel create more content in the future. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel. That said, let's get started with part 1 of 2, Photoshop Concepting. Okay, so in Photoshop, uh, we are going to look at how to use the brushes that are on sale on my art station, um, MLW Creative uh, brush set uh, of 56. And I'm going to show you how I use these brushes to uh, put my, uh, to, to finish off my ZBrush concept in Photoshop uh, to a more uh, finalized stage. Um, something that you could use in your portfolio or to show off to a client as a concept piece. Uh, it, it, I try to merge both the Photoshop and the ZBrush together um, to create something interesting to look at. Uh, now the Photoshop section is only there to help ground my concept. It's not there to overtake what's on the model or the model that we created in ZBrush. So the techniques I'm going to use now, are, they're going to look quite random and dirty but in the end it, uh, it's it's not about the Photoshop painting it's more about the model that you have sculpted inside a ZBrush so let's get started uh, as you can see this is a very old um, sculpt that I've uh, created a, a while back and uh, I just brought it into Zebra into Photoshop with those ZBrush layers that I create using the ZBrush uh, rendering techniques uh, from my previous videos and you can see here they are all in here uh, layered up but uh, this is not going to be a uh, tutorial on how I create the ZBrush render uh, use the ZBrush renders to create my uh, concept this is more about the brushes that I use inside of Photoshop to help bring the character uh, into a, a more final stage of concept um, so the first thing I do once I've finished the ZBrush model is to uh, delete all the stuff I don't need from the from the from the renders, like the backgrounds of those uh, screen grabs, and then I add a background uh, to it. So what I tend to use is the paint uh, paint bucket um, a lot uh, at the stage. The paint bucket with a gradient tool. Um, and using these gradients, different types of gradients, I just block in some interesting colors and shapes or uh, interesting gradients for uh, the background, uh, something like that. Trying to put the light in the same area as the character um, and the background, uh, something very basic. I don't want to pull the eye away from the model uh, again, trying to make it look uh, like it belongs in an area in a in a scene maybe but not emphasizing too much on that uh, once I have the gradients as I like them like this then I can come into the background layer here add another layer and then I'll start blocking in some random paintbrush strokes uh, so so this one here sample brush I will bring it in and just start selecting some of those background colors and lightly adding in some strokes. Uh, I have the opacity turned on as well as the size of the brush and what I'm trying to do here is just make it look less like I've used gradients, uh, the gradient tools and, and just blending in those, those areas. Uh, just to give it a more interesting feel. 
the background. I just move these paintbrushes out of the way. And I'll typically just go in here and just color pick using the color pick tool, the area behind or the air, the the gradients that I created, and just blend it in nicely with this brush. Try to get some kind of silhouette in the background. Maybe this could be a forest in the background using this brush. Um, some tree foliage or silhouettes. And it's very it's a very quick uh, process. I don't want to spend a lot of time on the background uh, because it's not the focal point. Again, everything is supposed to be focused on the model, not the, the background. And then we just come in here on the ground and we do the same on the ground. So just color pick the ground and add some variation to the ground. And once I'm happy with the way the background looks using this brush, then I can come in here and then there, there's a, uh, a Factura Farba brush. Now this brush uses uh, a transfer on it, I believe. I uh, can't find it now. But it has a texture on it, sorry, that is like a canvas. So you'll get, if you zoom in, you'll see that it's got these little dots that make it look canvas-like. And that's, that's quite an interesting, interesting um, texture to use and it, it just breaks up that flat look to your your concept so uh, if you add another layer grab any of the background color don't make it too big because then you, it, it just ruin it, 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 it you can't see the texture very well um, so just make sure it's a reasonable size and then just go over everywhere color picking darker patches lighter patches and this is just going to break up that harsh, uh, that soft, sorry, um, background. Make it look like it's on a canvas uh, feel. See, and what you can do is you can you can play around with these settings here, these layers, and try and find a good layer to use. I'm just going to do for soft light, and I'm just going to bring the capacity down quite a bit. I just want to be able to barely see it. Just barely see it there. And uh, once I'm done with that, I'll come over to the paint over. And um, uh, the paint over is usually the one that's on the top of the whole project. And that's the one where I will paint on the background as well as on the character. Uh, so I tend to use this brush, the sample brush, sa sampled brush, or uh, sample the other sample brush, there's quite a few sample brushes in there. Um, they all have a variation in, uh, you know, put, um, texture on it. But these are the main ones that I would use. So the, these main, these ones down here are the main brushes that I would tend to use when in, inside of Photoshop, just finishing off my concepts. Uh, so I'm going to go for the the sample brush because it's got a nice fall off, like a sh like a nice opacity fall off to it, a softer fall off, and then I'm just going to start painting some foliage on the ground. Again, not too worried about the. about the uh, photo realism to it just it's just there to add some interesting shape uh, interesting interest to the concept sorry so you can use this brush for foliage and then what you could do is go into the eraser tool and select the same brush scale it down and then cut back in to that painting of the foliage so it looks more strand like. So 
so it can look like grass from afar. It's, it's an easier way than painting every single grass uh, strand, I guess. It this takes a lot of practice to to get the look you like. So take your time. Don't rush. I'm gonna just add a new layer. And you can even colour pick from from the model itself. And bring the size down. Once you have that base layer of grass you can bring the size down and then paint in some uh, lighter strands just to show that there's a light effect on it on the grass now I'm not a expert in painting I tend to do a lot of my work inside of ZBrush rather than Photoshop so Sorry if it doesn't look amazingly amazing right now. Um, usually, I would spend hours uh, trying to get the look right, but I'm just showing you how I go about using these brushes on my uh, on my drawings on my concepts. Just gonna drop the opacity on that, and now it's not, it's still not still not too late to use um, a paint bucket tool. So we can go back in here for gradient and add another gradient, just colour pick it and we're going to add it to the bottoms here just to bring in these because we want our eyes to focus on this character here we want to focus on that part so we're going to make the edges slightly darker so that it's nicely framed Oop, drop that Ah, sorry. So, just framing our character nice. And then we can add another one. And we can bright. We want to brighten this patch around here because at the moment the character is not sitting in the scene very well. He's too bright and the background is too dark. So we can come back down to the uh, background layer, add another layer. You can even color pick from the, the model again and then change it to an overlay for now. And then come to the top here add another layer and I'm just going to use a pure paint bucket to add an overall color to my scene uh, so I want there to be a bit more green in on the whole scene uh, including the character and I'll just bring these uh, layers down a bit using a soft light layer and then I'll add a new layer and now I'll start working on top of the, on top of that green fill, uh, soft light color. Uh, I will then add a new layer, and on from now on I will color pick from this from this one. So if I wanted to make let's say let's make put some fur on his shoulders, uh, I tend to go for a very dark color first for fur. Well, not very dark color, just a darker color normally for fur as an a an, an, uh, baseline. Uh, when when painting, and again, I'm not painting every strand of hair. I'm giving you a, a um, an idea of how the hair would be on there. Uh, there's a lot of people saying, why don't why, why don't I use uh, ZBrush or, or XGen to add hair to the character? Um, that's because I I want to have a quick concept out. I don't want to spend time in ZBrush with the hair tools. Um, or fiber mesh tools, uh, or in, in Maya. I just want to get a nice cool concept out as fast as possible and I can change the variations of uh, of hair color if I like. 
so inside of Photoshop really quickly. Um, so that's the reason why I don't tend to use uh, photo uh, hair fiber or, or fiber mesh for hair. I, I tend to just come in here quickly and, and suggest hair where there is hair uh, all on the model. So just using that same brush again, sample brush, just gonna add some hair follicle and then using the erasure tool come in here with a smaller brush and just make some interesting flicks as if there are strands of hairs uh, erasing erasing some of those hairs out of there so it looks like he's got flicks of hair shabby hair coming off him irregular like so just erase areas don't want there to be hair And then you can add a new layer, <coughs> go back to your brush, <coughs> and then there is a character paint hair down here. And this is going to be the strands of hair uh, like um, that are caught by the light, like just random strays, strands of hair you can use this for. And you can just lightly paint them in using a really bright white should be able to see it. Uh, if you can't, then don't worry too much. You can go back over it with a, another brush in a minute. That's just a good brush to use if you want strands of hair coming down the arm, maybe. Maybe just bring it to more white. Up the sides a bit. And then very slowly build up those hair follicles that we caught, like the fuzz would be caught on the arm there and when you zoom out it just breaks up that it'll just break up that arm uh, that very straight arm there uh, you can even do it on here as well just little follicles of hair and then just along his chest and bum the background it's just given an impression of where the hair is very quick way to add hair, and you can go around the ed the end, the outside of these ones as well, on the head. Add more wisps. Just on his chin as well. So, there we go. If you want to add even more uh, visible hair, then you can come back in here to the brushes, and there should be a fine liner brush you can use if you bring it down to a very small size add a new layer and just paint in oh maybe not the fine liner there's another brush in here you can use a tilt silt sample brush which is basically the same sample brush but I've tilted it so that it it's got a better it's got a, an angle to the brush and this is good for painting in those stray hairs because of the angle the brush is at so you can just come in here and start painting in a few strands, stray strands of hair. Wherever you like. 
can come in here and add it on his eyebrows as well. Like so. And just a few stray hairs, maybe some longer ones on his arms. Our character has a mane, a hair, a mane of hair, or head of hair, basically. Uh, and you can do that the same all around the body, um, depending on where you want the hair to be. Uh, just remember that subtlety is the key. You don't want to go overboard with the hair because then you're going to lose the model that's underneath. If you wanted to have a character that had loads of hair, like a werewolf or um, uh, a sheep or whatever then you would probably be better off sculpting that in in the concept rather than painting it in Photoshop uh, depending on how good your skills are in painting um, but this is just a, a very quick way of adding some fur to your character or hair to your character um, inside of Photoshop and not having to worry about making it in in 3D programs uh, so the next thing I want to do is let's add a new layer, uh, bring this one underneath so the background is. We just want to break up some of that background some more. Uh, so you've got some speckled brushes in here that you can use just to make it a bit more interesting. So you can add some speckles in the background. And switch this to a multiply or an overlay. Bring the opacity down and the fill. So it's just visible. Just about visible. Uh, what's next? You can add a new layer and go down to the tilt brush again just to find some more hair, uh, some more grass maybe ones that are closer to the camera so you can just you know add some foliage in there unless you have a foliage brush you can do the same thing it's just another way of using the brush for grass And over here as well, again, not too worried about the realism of the grass because it's not the focal point of the concept. Now, it's not always, I will, I will not always use every brush in my brush set. I will use, those are one, these are, these brushes are the ones that I use most often but they're not always used all together in the same work or, or piece of art that I create. So um, there might be some times that I don't use any of these brushes. There might be some times that I do use some of these brushes. So best thing to do is to just try them all out and uh, see what you come up with uh, as a good, uh, an interesting um, usage of these brushes but I will use these ones more often than than others um, especially I like this one a lot as well this vertical stripe one it just breaks up the scene a bit more giving it that canvas oil canvas sort of look to it or uh, canvas throwing splattered paint all over it sort of look that. Maybe I'll add in some more light coming from this side. So use the circle.
so. There you go, and then add a new layer. I like to make a lot of layers. Um, I don't like having everything on one in one place. There's another brush you could use as the ink brush for some sort of grass texture if you wanted. Uh, like so. Just to break up that softness a bit. Then I can add a new layer, another gradient. Want to introduce a new color to the scene. Bring it below the character, so it's behind the character. So again, you can spend as much time as you like with Photoshop, adding more and more layers uh, that you want, and tweaking them. Until you get exactly what you want. Uh, so I'm just going to go to the bottom here again, the background. Because I've added a rim light, I'd like to just emphasize that rim light a bit more. So I'm going to add another layer and add it to the back. Like so. soft light and just bring it down a bit. So that is how I would use these brushes. Uh, you can there's uh, plenty of brushes in here that you can use to test and, and try out um, on your concept. Uh, once you're happy with it, then this is a nice one. De debris sparks. Uh, it's good for f dust flying in the air. I've even got a dust bust brush in there somewhere, I believe. A particles brush. You can just add this one. Like so. Random. And then just erase the parts you don't want. I can add a duplicate of that. Set that to a color. Uh, dodge. Come back to the original one. And just bring down the opacity a bit. And then add some more. And then erase a few. Like that. And once I'm happy with the way the concept looks, so I say this is the final image, I'll then start using uh, adjustment layers. So I'll make a new layer, new fill, a uh, new folder, sorry, call it adjustment. And then using the adjustment layers down here, I'll prop the exposure up a bit. Come over to the levels and pop the level up slightly then using color balance go into the shadows bring the shadows down or make the shadows more bluish to hue to it 
and then brightness and contrast. Probably pop the contrast up a bit. A little bit on the brightness as well. Don't want to burn the image too too much. Like that. And finally a color lookup. I like to just play with these color lookup layer uh, filters and see what I can come up with that will look cool. Usually the last one is the quite nice one. The tension green. Um, but it's totally up to you. I'm going to go for the tension green and change it to a color layer and just bring the color down, the opacity down and the fill down a bit. Just make sure it's all cropped nicely. Once I'm happy with the way it's looking, I will make a duplicate of those layers and merge them together and then come up here to the filter sharpen smart sharpen and this is just going to give us a, a sharper image of our creature and then I will come over to uh, the paint bucket tool add a new layer fill it doesn't matter what color it is just fill it with a layer fill layer sorry and then add a, add a noise come over to soft light bring down the opacity bring down the fill just so it's visible just barely visible there should be like a little bit of noise in the image now it just breaks up again breaking up that hard hard uh, edges on, on the character on the model and uh, that will be that will be done. So, what within 30, 30 minutes we've gone from a character from ZBrush to uh, Photoshop and added some interesting background elements just to emphasize the character a bit more. Uh, not trying not to pull away too much attention to the character. Uh, this has been a very quick example, obviously, um, using these these Photoshop brushes that I. Uh, that I created um, uh, and you can find on my art station and yeah just you know play around a bit uh, with all these brushes and see what you, what you can come up with um, again I won't use all the brushes there's specific uh, times that I'll use uh, different types of brushes uh, this has been just a very quick look at how I create a character concept with a background with these brushes so um, yeah so you know try them out uh, see what you can come up with and in the next part I'm going to show you how I create a concept using the same brushes but for a portrait rather than a full on color a uh, full on character in background in a background situation so look forward uh, that will be in part 2 so uh, i'll see you in part 2on how to use the Photoshop brushes from my 56 uh, pack um, on ArtStation. Uh, this one is going to focus now on how to uh, create an interesting looking portrait using these uh, brush, the brush sets that I have given you. Um, so this is an old piece uh, an old concept that I created I uh, found in my um, library and I'm going to show you how I uh, will take this a little further using the brushes inside of ZBrush to give it a bit more of an interesting look so 
Uh, that being said, let's get started. Uh, so the first thing I'd like to do again is come into the background, um, choose a color, the gradient tool, uh, use the this gradient, and start putting in some darker gradients for this concept. So I will define where the dark is and the light is uh, by looking at where the light is hitting on my model. So the dark area will be this side of the model and the light area will be on this side. So just color picking, we're just going to add some variant variations of color for the background. Bring down the opacity a bit. Add a new one. And again, I want to add a rim light, uh, like a light in the back of the model. Like so, and then I'll bring down, pop down the opacity quite a bit, and the fill quite a bit as well. And then add a new layer. And I will typically do this until I get a good looking variation of colors in the background. So let's say that will do for now. So once I've done that, I will come over to the paint over tool, uh, paint over folder, sorry, on the top, and then come out, come down to the sample brush, and then start adding in uh, filling in some of the uh, model that I forgot or, or I didn't paint or sculpt in ZBrush so I'm trying to focus on the head area uh, for this concept so anything below the neckline is just going to be painted in uh, quickly and blended to the background to make it look interesting so it doesn't look like it's just a head and shoulders floating in the air basically so I will start color picking from the model and just add in some very quick colors to define the shoulders. Use the eraser tool if you feel like you've painted over too much of the model and bring it back again this doesn't have to be a very detailed part of the concept because the detail part is the face you want to focus on the face more so this is just an artistic way of making your model look a bit more interesting and you can blend it into the background, blend the background into the model as well by colour picking the, the background like so. I normally have a navigation window open here so I can see the model uh, the image from afar and how it, how the colors and brush strokes play off each other so Once I've got like a fairly good idea about I want it with this at this stage, then I will come in, uh, go back down to the background, add a new layer, and again add stroke variation in the background. So it will marry nicely with the 
part we just painted. So just add in a few light touches and colour picking the background. We might find that there's too much light on the side now, so we want to bring this into darkness a bit more. Up into the light. Come over to the paint over. Uh, erase those areas and then paint them back in like so now this, this, like I said these this doesn't have to be too detailed on the bottom here on the neck uh, on the shoulders sorry because we don't have to have too much detail showing in those areas just so it gives the, the illusion that it is there. The skin is there. And what you can do now is add a new layer. Come over here to the brushes section. Add a f Factura Fabra brush again from the previous video. And we just want to add a texture feel to the background a bit. So we'll color pick from the canvas, from the um, image, and just add some some of that canvas paper texture look to it. And once we're happy, come down to screen, pull the opacity down, and the fill, so you're just visible. Just there to break it up a bit. Come up here. What I want to do is add a bit of texture on the bottom of the skin here. So there is a texture brush in here somewhere. Just find it. You can use this one if you like. Or you can find a texture reptile. Just put in some textures. Some texture in there. And then the sampled brush. This one's quite nice because it's got a multiple brush stroke on it and it follows the direction of your brush so you can pick a color and then just blend these two in like so You can see now that the, the model is sitting nicer in this concept. Um, you can go back to the tilt brush and just add a bit more highlight in there, in there, faking it a bit, maybe bring it up the neck a little bit so it blends in. Uh, that blend it in a bit more like so and you can get this sharp this specular highlight here and just make the brush quite small and just give it a hint of that wet look. This is how I would typically create my concepts, portrait concepts. Uh, I would normally take a little longer to make sure it looks good. But this is just a very quick tutorial on how I use it. Now I'm going to break up the silhouette because at the moment it's very sharp around the whole area. I'm going to break it up using um, the tilt brush or the character hair brush. 
and just add some hair follicles around the edges because that will break up that silhouette even more and it might not look like a, a major change when you when you're painting these and you, you can hardly see the fair hair follicles but it does help um, break up that silhouette later on you will see it so when the hair is coming out here That. And then I'm going to go to the tilt brush, make the brush quite small, and get some of those longer strands of flyaway hairs painted in. I tend to, as the as the image comes below the portrait area, uh, around here, I tend to use less and less detail in that area, and more and more detail on the face, um, just so it doesn't distract uh, from what we were looking at, or supposed to be looking at. So. So that is pretty good. Add a new layer. Come over here to the soft brush, soft round brush. Size it up, and I might just add a little bit of shadow in this area a bit more. Defining that shadow area there. Give me a little bit in there. Turn it to a multiply, bring down the opacity a bit. I just want to clean up some of that. I just want to clean up that area along here a bit more with a softer sample brush like so there we go and in the background you can add more more to the background uh, you can add these particle verticals, which we used in the last one, just to break up background a bit. Or you can look to here, find oil brush or uh, dots just add some add some dots to the background stick it to a screen like so and then there's a uh, here was it oil brush which we can use on a new layer on the paint over layer and this one will just give us a nice what was it the ink layer so ink brush sorry yeah this this brush will just give us a nice fall off yeah. 
full of brush. Break up. Like so. Play around, see what you come up with. Um, and uh, yeah, there's quite a few brushes in here. I, I haven't had time to go through all of them. Uh, I've just gone through a few of them. But these are the majority, the majority of the brushes I use are in here for uh, to create these these concepts um, and then I'll I will usually again come over here add an adjustment layer and in this adjustment layer I would add an exposure a brightness contrast Color balance, go to the shadows, add a blue hit to hue to it, or whatever hue you like to the shadows. Whatever takes your fancy. Um, and then I add a level, bring those darker dark color uh, darker hues back and a vibrance to bring out some more of that vibrant color you can go really high up on the vibrancy um, or you can be more subtle and same with the saturation I think it's going to look quite good if you have a, a vibrant quite vibrant colors especially to the reds and the blues and then you can add a and saturation just bring down the saturation a little bit and then overall a color lookup and then you can come through here and choose the best one for your character there's no special f formula it's just going through each one trying to find the best one for the job. This tension green is usually quite a good one to use. It's got a nice, uh, a nice colour to it. Um, you can have it as a uh, colour layer. Drop it right down just so it gives that hint of green to your canvas or to your concept sorry and it helps blend the background with the foreground image as well and you can then finally just add in <coughs> a fill layer with a noise and then turn this on to soft light bring it down just so it's fairly visible there should be some type of noise on your model now and then the final thing to do is to duplicate duplicate both of these or all of these sorry merge the layers crop it and then add a sharpen smart sharpen to it. That is done. So that didn't take too long. That was roughly 20 minutes. Once you get all the ZBrush files and um, layers sorted, this, this pass will take roughly 20 to 30 minutes just to finish it off, uh, finish off the concept. So uh, when you get good enough, uh, for now, just play around, see what you come up with. Um, Use the, all the brushes if you want to. Use some of the brushes. They all there. They will all help uh, help with the uh, final image uh, that you're trying to create. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if you found this helpful, I hope you did. Um, have fun, and uh, yeah, good luck. Thank you for watching. And if you could. 
like, share, and subscribe this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel um, and share the video to anyone who you might think might like to learn how to do this sort of thing. That would really help. Um, and I will try to make more of these in the future. Um, so thank you very much.